Hello. Is the metric system actually better? That's the question today from Real Engineering. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. I say no, no. I prefer completely arbitrary units with no rhyme, reason, or consistency. Things like foot, because my foot happens to almost exactly be a foot long. So I, I, I think that's convenient. But let's see, let's see what the real engineering has to say. This episode of Real Engineering is brought to you by Brilliant, a problem solving website that teaches you to think like an engineer. The time has finally arrived. The comment section demanding imperial and metric units has gone on too long. There can only be one measurement system. The British imperial system, like everything British, is based on antiquated units of measurement, like measuring your country's importance by counting the number of countries you have invaded and pillaged. A measurement that made sense 100 years ago, but it's time to move on. Weirdly, the British have mostly moved on from this method of measurement. Is that an actual, I don't know what the reference is there. <clears throat> Did they actually use that as like a unit? How many countries you've invaded? And it is instead Americans who insist on holding on to it. Well, America, Liberia, and Myanmar. Oh, really? I thought we were the only people. I've never seen Liberia's flag. It's looks kind of familiar. It's weird. A prestigious trio. Now, I can already hear the people who refuse to wear masks in the comments. <laughs> there are two kinds of countries, those that use the metric system and those that landed on the moon. You know who led the design team for this? True. I think Liberia was the first to land on the moon. Saturn V, <clears throat> this guy. Listen to that deep Alabama accent. This weight dictates the amount of fuel and the numbers of motors an American, through and through. Ignore this photo of him. Those are just some German friends he made while on gap year in Europe. Look at all his friends. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. nine friends. A popular man. This Alabama native used metric. In fact, he despised British units. So much so that he designed a rocket no. during his gap year to fly to England to show them how great the metric system was. <laughs> the Saturn V was designed, like nearly everything in NASA at the time, with a mixture of both metric and imperial units. Hmm. Just read the mission. That would make it even more confusing. In reports for a mixture Apollo 11 for proof of this. It switches between inches and centimeters constantly. Hmm. It's a mess. Anyone working with this report would have had to be hyper aware of what unit of measurement they were using. It's a miracle that thing didn't blow up. Most of the design and science work was done in metric before being converted to Imperial for the manufacturing and operational staff. Mm. One of the most- I have heard like the United States is actually on the metric system. It's just the stupid people that use <coughs> the Imperial system. Like as far as all the data and everything that the US government takes and blah, blah, blah. I, from what I heard, it's all in metric. It could be a complete lie. I don't remember who told me that. Mind boggling examples of this is the guidance computer. It was coded in metric. Meters and kilograms are the language of science, but to ensure the astronauts could intuitively understand what those calculations meant, the displays inside the lunar module had to be displayed in British Imperial units. Hmm. So even back then, <laughs> when computer power was extremely limited, the engineers had to waste precious computational time and Converting power it. to conversion. Wow. This isn't just a waste of computation power. Errors in conversion have led to an insane number of accidents through the years. Yikes. Some of the most notable being in NASA. In December- Well, yeah, that would be because NASA is dealing with rockets for 1998 the so when something goes wrong there it's noticeable Mars climate orbiter took off from cape canaveral aboard its delta 2 rocket over the course of its nine and a half month journey the orbiter nine, needed nine, to complete nine. trajectory correction maneuvers to bring it into an optimal orbit insertion altitude of 226 kilometers 
However, as the time grew closer, calculations showed that the orbiter was entering Mars' orbit in a far lower altitude, so low oh, no. that it was likely going to strike the atmosphere and violently tear itself apart. This is exactly what happened. So what went wrong? The orbiter was coded with metric units, so the thruster control unit was working with the metric unit for impulse, newton seconds, but the controller was being supplied with pound force seconds, which differs by a conversion factor of 4.45, a massive discrepancy, a discrepancy that destroyed a $328 million project. Oof. In 1983, an Air Canada flight departing from Montreal ran out of fuel halfway to its destination in Edmonton. Why? The ground crew knew 22,500 kilograms of fuel was needed for the flight. They however needed to calculate how many litres were needed to be pumped. So they used the density ratio to convert the weight measurement to a volume measurement, but they used the 1.77 density ratio, which was pounds per litre, instead of the correct ratio no of 0 0.8 kilo. That is scary. <laughs> that is really scary. The fact that that could ever happen. <coughs> I would have thought there was like, what year was this? Shouldn't there be a computer on the airplane that's like, okay, you've got this much fuel. I mean, my car can tell me how far it can go. Like it measures the amount of fuel in the tank and tells me you can go this far. So how does this get messed up? Kilograms per liter, resulting in less than half the required fuel load being pumped aboard. Luckily, the pilot managed to glide the plane down to an abandoned oh airfield. But that and these guys just happen to be there? A little boo-boo of a conversion error could have resulted in a catastrophic loss of life. These are two cautionary tales with disastrous consequences, but it tells you nothing of the silent screams into the void every engineer in the world lets out when they are forced to work with both units. It's just an unnecessary pain in the ass. Well, yeah, if there's one thing we've learned so far is that both units, you can't use both. You gotta choose one or the other. But which one's better? We could all do without. This We all know metrics better. This is the reason we need to choose one measurement system. Mixing units not only is tempting fate with conversion errors, but it costs an untold number of hours for scientists and engineers around the world mm. banging their head against tables <laughs> when they could be using that time for something more productive. I could end the video there, but we need to really hammer home why metric units are the superior units. So why is it better? Well, let's start with the fundamental- Because it's not completely arbitrary. Mental unit of measurement. There are seven base units of measurement, and with these seven- It's not based on like how long it's been since the king has cut his toenails. Oh, a foot is a centimeter longer today. We can measure everything in the universe. Think of them like the three primary colors of light. With these three colors, we can create any color in the universe by mixing them in just the correct proportions. Hmm, any in the universe. We can do the same with these fundamental units of measurement. They are time, length, mass, temperature, electric current, chemical amount, and luminous intensity. With these measures, we can describe our universe. Velocity is wow. a combination of length and time, volume is length cubed, density is volume combined with mass. These measurements are the language cool. of the universe. So let's see how the imperial system handles a very simple one, length. An inch is a standard unit of measurement for length in the imperial system. Let's imagine a scenario. You are designing a railing for a one mile long bridge. You, as a skilled and knowledgeable engineer, know that two half inch bolts are more than enough to secure the railing down. The posts of the okay. railing are six feet apart. All right, how many inches are there in a foot? 12, so that's 72 I... inches. Every 72 inches we need two bolts, our bridge is one mile long. How many feet is that? I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, 3,500. And the quick Google search tells um, me it's 5,280 5, feet. What's 12 inches by 5,080? That's 63,360 inches. Divide that by 72, that's 880. So we need to order 1,760 half inch bolts. That felt cumbersome. Why do I need to remember all these numbers? Because Imperial is a convoluted mess of measurement units 
invented by people who married their cousins. That's why. No. Now, <laughs> let's see how much easier that is in metric. How many millimeters yeah, are there in, in a there. meter? It's in the name. Milli, 1000. Now, how many meters are there in a kilometer? Once again, it's in the damn name. Kilo, <laughs> 1000. Given a measurement in kilometers but want meters, just shift the decimal place over three places. No calculation needed. There is no room for boring error. It's a simply better system. Even within Imperial, you have to constantly convert your units. Ounces to pounds, pounds to Imperial tons, which for some reason differs from a metric ton by 1.6%. Again, in metric, there are 1000 grams in a kilogram and 1000 kilograms in a ton. In Imperial, there are 16 ounces in a pound and 2,240 pounds in an Imperial ton. Why? You aren't even following the same conversion conventions. It's because the frickin... <coughs> the ton was based off what? Wasn't it based off of like... Hold on. There you go. I asked chat GPT. It's because the weight of the ton was literally a barrel of wine. The weight of a barrel of wine. And guess what? Some people put more or less wine in their barrel. So it wasn't very consistent and it was completely arbitrary. As your other units, this is insanely cumbersome. The chances of conversion errors even within your own damn system is high. Never mind having to convert to metric. <laughs> you know what's even more insane? The word for mass and weight in the imperial system is the same. Why? Because the pound was invented before we knew what gravity was. That's why. We it is super weird. So in metric is mass and... <coughs> is there... What do you call it? Mass and weight? There's a difference between that? Because here, it's so weird how there's no... When you're trying to learn that in school, it's so confusing. They're like, weight is what gravity is pulling down on you but mass is like has nothing to do with gravity but it's the same thing we just assumed mass and weight were the same thing when they aren't so we have to specify in imperial whether we mean pound mass or pound force mm. i haven't been this confused since i watched magic mike the most ridiculous thing about all of this every single one of these imperial measurements are legally defined by the metric system America is already using the metric system, and most of the population is oblivious to it. So, yep, yeah, see that's, yep. Yeah. Freedom, America, guns, pew pew, oorah. Hey, I've never said that. The foot is legally defined as 0 0.3. Only on 4th of July. 3048 meters. The pound is legally defined by 0 0.435 kilograms. Why? That's Because funny. the metric system is run by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, a neutral international organization whose sole mission is to create a global language of science who America is a member of. And they have succeeded in an awe-inspiring way. In 2019, the final metric base unit, the kilogram, stopped being defined by human artifacts and is now, like all other metric units, defined by the laws of physics. In 2019, it ceased being defined by this hunk of metal. Oh, really? It's not defined? Because I knew they had like a hunk of metal that weighed a kilogram in different countries for them to reference and stuff. <clears throat> now it's based on just some equation? And began being defined by Planck's constant, which is defined as 6.626 oh. by 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared per second. Of course, to use huh? this as a definition, we need ways to define the meter and second. The meter mm. is defined as the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in one divided by 299,792,458 <laughs> of a second. My God. Okay, so how do we define a second? A second is defined by the hyperfine transition frequency, which is the frequency of radiation, which will cause an electron to jump from two closely spaced low energy states in a cesium-133 atom. What the hell? Oh. Hello? <laughs> Hello, sir? Yes, sir? Dude, are you trying to complain? 
<laughs> we'll be right back. We're back. Each of the space-based low energy states in a cesium-133 atom. Of course. Each of the base units are defined like this. That's the coolest dude ever. This, using the unchanging language of the universe as its yardstick, or should I say, meter stick. That does make sense. <coughs> Makes a lot of sense. I like that. That's like satisfying, knowing that it's all kind of encoded in clever ways, you know? Um, into the physical world, like physics and quantum uh, measurements. I don't know what I'm talking about, you know, but yeah. It's a beautiful and inspiring language that transcends the realm of humans. And for that reason alone, you should strive to use the metric system. Understanding the language of the universe is a superpower and there is no better. But the problem is if you're the only person in the country using the metric system, then nobody knows what you're talking about, <laughs> which is pretty important. If I say, oh, I'm 1.3, 1.8 meters tall or whatever, uh, most Americans will be like, what the f- what the f- you need to say to me? I'm telling you, boy, I want to hear measurements of the king's foot, not, not no French measuring stick bullshit kind of way. Their place to become fluent in that language then brilliant did you know that you can measure i think we're done here and this math prime have on analytical ability yeah i think we're done go check out real engineering that was a fun video that was very fun i didn't expect it to be kind of tongue-in-cheek you know <laughs> there were a lot of shots fired and little punches little stab jabs do, do, do. at americans in there i appreciate that uh i had fun though Imperial and metric have something in common. They're both incompatible with imperial. Hmm. Nerd humor. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Subscribe if you want to. Either way. Goodbye.